Bibles and turn with me to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Amen. Philippians chapter 2. We're going to actually be going in chapter 1, but we're right next to it. And if I were to put a title on today's message, I would say, How serious are you about your salvation? Look at somebody and say, How serious are you about your salvation? Y'all want to stay here? You can stay here. Amen. Look at somebody else and say, how serious, how serious are, you are you about your salvation? Now, if you're serious about your salvation, uh, there's nothing more serious of a matter on earth than it is your salvation. Amen. You see, your salvation will take you places where your flesh can never take you. For God said, flesh and blood shall never inherit the kingdom of heaven. Right. It is your soul that God is seeking out. Yeah. Amen. You got to be as serious as possible. Amen. You can be a junior believer. All right. You can be a senior believer. Amen. You can be an immature believer, but... I've learned that if you take your salvation serious, you can be a professional believer. Amen. Ain't that right? Amen. Look at somebody else and say, how firm is your foundation? Is your foundation? Mm -hmm. You better make sure your foundation is built on Christ's righteousness Amen. and nothing else. Amen. Because all other sin is seeking. Amen. You look around today and all kind of things that happen. All right. Wars and rumors of wars. All right. Earthquakes that is vomiting up. Right. The earth is having a heart attack and yeah. choking out. Yeah. It's throwing up vomit and volcano activity. Yeah. Right. Come on, somebody. Yeah. There's uh, tsunamis and earthquakes underneath the, the sea wall or the sea floor. Things are happening where there are all kind of pervertedness in the land. People are not serious today. They just feel all the weather is out of whack. They're begging for snow when we get good weather. And when it's good weather, where's the snow at? Because somebody want to make some money and go to the snow, snow sleep. The slopes. But here we need to understand in Philippians that Paul write them a thank you letter. I want to thank all y'all for being here this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, most pastors won't thank their congregation, but I want to thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. I know you didn't come for me. I understand that. But you came for the Lord. Amen? Amen. But you came for, from a word. Amen? Amen? Because you need a word in your heart. Amen? Amen. And so I ask you today a serious question. How serious are you about your salvation? Right, yeah. See, because when we were, I'm doing a special teaching on Thursday night. If you didn't come, you missed out on a real duty. Yeah. 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 I, I'm teaching on the judgment seat of Christ yeah. and the great white throne judgment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean some heavy duty stuff. Stuff that makes you say, wait a minute. It's all in the scripture. Don't you know you can come before the judgment seat of Christ? And receive salvation but lose part of your reward? Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, come out and you'll find out. Amen? Amen. Chapter 2, verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 26. Paul began to tell the church of Philippians uh, that uh, in verse 26, chapter 1, verse 26, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ. For may for me by my coming to you again. He said, but only let your conversation, only let your life be as it become the gospel of Christ. That Paul said, will I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs. Come on, somebody. That you stand fast in one spirit. See, there are all kinds of spirits in the land today. There are even seducing spirits that will seduce you right out of the church. Amen. That'll tell you all kinds of things in your brain and lead you to do all kinds of things. All right. With one mind uh, striving together 
for the faith of the gospel. Yes. In the verse 1, he said, And nothing terrified by your adversary, which is to them an evidence token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. In the verse 29, he says that, I want you to know something. I was given this message about 30 years ago in a patient at the VA hospital and it didn't know my name, didn't know me, and I was going through something and I was coming down the hallway and I don't very seldom drop my head, but I was talking about something. And this fellow rolled up to me in this wheelchair and he said, according to the Philippians chapter 1 and verse 29, unto you it is to be given on behalf of Christ not only to believe in him, yeah. but to suffer right, for his name's sake. Yeah. You don't know how that jumped down in yeah. my spirit yeah. and let me realize that whatever I do, it's going to all be for the glory of God. I'm asking you the question today, how serious are you about yourself? Yeah. You don't know how blessed I was that day. Yeah. Not only to believe on him, but to suffer for his sake. Yeah. Verse 30 say, having the same conflict which he saw in me and now here to be in me. Yeah. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, of any fellowship of the Spirit, if any vows of mercy, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love. Yes. Yeah. Being of one accord of one mind. Amen. Let nothing be done through strife. Right. Come on, somebody. Amen. If you're going to do something for me, do it out of love. Amen. Look at somebody and say, if you're going to do something for me. Yeah. Look around somebody. Look at anybody. It don't matter. If you're going to do something for me, do it out of love. Do it out of love. They ain't got stupid written on their forehead today. There's a lot of people they can deserve when you want to do something and when you don't really don't want to be bothered. So don't do it through strife or vain glory. But in lowness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look, 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 look here now. Look not every man on his own thing. Come on, somebody. But every man also on the things of others. However, you can help somebody out. If you're going to look down on somebody, look down and lift them up. This is the mind that Christ wants you to have. Let this mind be in you, which also is in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God, who being in the form of God, didn't think that it was a robbery to be equal with God. Christ came from God. Ain't that right? Amen. But make of himself of no reputation. See, folks want a, a reputation in it. Come on, somebody. Well, everybody's not talking about reputation. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. When I was growing up, the kids that know me, and I, I didn't try to get no reputation, but I had one of you. You better leave him alone. Because <laughs> he will bust you in your head. Amen? I didn't play around with you. Y'all don't know how blessed y'all got it. <laughs> I'm not just telling you something. You go back and ask the guys I grew up with. Amen? I was a small fella. I was skinny. But I got the first good lick in there. Come on, somebody. I might even got whooped a few times. I'm saying a few times. But I was brushing your brain. That's how quick it happened. And you don't know how much Holy Ghost can hold back on me. That keep me from busting some of y'all in the head. See, the pastor have to tell you this so it lets you know how human I am. Because see, sometimes you don't think I got any feelings or I don't, I don't, you know, come on somebody. You have no idea. You have no idea. Amen? I don't go around trying to get a reputation of picking on folks to bother with people, but I'm one of these type of individuals, don't 